everyone, this is Lalo and I'm going to continue on the second part of the video that I just um, finished last time that is an introduction to myself, Lolo, the channel, what I do, why I'm doing the things I'm doing and to give you an insight on me so that in my next projects you'll be able to understand why I'm tackling certain topics in certain ways etc etc so my first video I talked about my infancy in Italy and how I got to England studying in England music and drama and how I got my dissertation how I love the academic world and the word that I still love and hopefully one day I'll be able to be more into a part of it as well as the world of music and drama <laughs> and creation art in general and today I really want to continue talking about my last, um, let's say, three years. So when I finished my dissertation uh, and I got my degree, um, I wanted to grow still. So to allow to do that, I didn't really see an opportunity to stay in Oxford if I didn't have a proper uh, job that allowed me to grow these skills. So what happened was that I applied for a few jobs and I remember one being a researcher, um, a maker really of statistics for music and video industries um, that got me interested because I, I you know, I, as I told you, I really loved making research. So I thought, hey, this seems really good. Plus the program they had, which was traveling around the world for the first years as a learning experience, seem pretty damn good so I applied for that but I don't think I even passed the second round for that or something like that so yeah yeah that that went pretty bad so <laughs> so then um, I saw other jobs and I didn't really got interested in any of the others so I thought I'm not going to continue being a waiter or a barista in Oxford something that I was doing as a part-time job while studying because I thought, you know, I, I learned the skills uh, in these jobs I just, you know, obviously I'm not perfect but I still want to grow and I feel like I would be really be able to grow more um, if I, I can't find a job that allows me to do that then maybe, uh, yeah, moving in another city, a bigger city would allow me to do that because Oxford actually is not that big Coming from London, being there for a few months, I thought, hey, it's gonna be a big city. Not at all. <laughs> it's a very small, let's, I, I wouldn't call it town. I don't know. It, it, it's small, but even if it's small, lots of things happen there, which is great. Especially in the academic world. I'm not saying if, I don't know if, I don't know if you say academia or academic, but hey, it is my English for you. So, <laughs> anyways. I uh, so I thought that um, I was like okay I'm going to continue working as these little jobs and I didn't think about moving to London because um, I already been there and in my head I was like oh I know London whatever <laughs> which is not really true I never really lived there but I, I kind of know London for sure so my first option was actually Malmo moving to Malmo in Sweden and I that that stopped there because I didn't know any Swedish and and even though everyone was telling me Lorenzo you don't know you don't need to know Swedish to go to Sweden and work there um, I remember reading one forum where one guy was like it's not true that you can find easily a job here if you don't know Swedish blah 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 and I was like oh damn I'm not I'm not gonna move there then I I was just like I'm not gonna risk it and then I met other people and I understood that it's really stupid. I even met a Swedish guy that told me that when he goes into a restaurant in Sweden, he's, he talks in English instead of Swedish, which is something that for me coming from Italy, especially from Italy guys, <laughs> I was like, I, they are in another world, like, how, how is this possible? Like, that, for me it's kind of mental. One night then I thought, okay, I know English, which other country I could go to staying in Europe? Because I didn't want to move out to the European Union, considering you need, you need visas, and I, I thought, okay, not for, I don't want to try for the moment, because that would be just more work for me to do. 
And then one day, Ireland, Dublin came up in my mind. So Dublin, I heard from a few people that was an amazing city. So here, here I was just making a decision to move to Dublin and I did. <laughs> so I moved to Dublin and I stayed there for one year and a half and it was such a great experience guys, like real life experience. Dublin is an, in an economic boom right now as Ireland in general. So um, you, if you work hard, you can, well, if you work hard, you can make it anywhere. But uh, I really do believe that the, the economic factor really push it, pushes it a little bit more. In fact, after a few first months of ugh, being trouble, I was in a job for one year that gave me a pretty damn good salary. And I was able to live in the center of Dublin because of that salary, and I was able to you know, go out, make experiences. And over there, Dublin is also a multicultural city. When I'm saying multicultural, really I'm saying South America, Eastern Europe, plus few people from Italy, France, Spain. And that's the reason, guys, que ahora puedo hablar español mejor, porque en uno de mis primeros uh, trabajos que tenía, uh, estaba con una Venezuela. Y bueno, yo conocía el español antes que, trabajaba, que, tra que yo trabajé con ella porque tenía a mis abuelos que vivían en el sur de la España, cerca de Málaga, en un cuarto, en, un cuarto, en una ciudad que se llama Nerja, para 20 años. Entonces, en un verano que yo estaba estudiando en Inglaterra, yo pensé, ok, tengo tres meses que voy a hacer, tengo mi tiempo libre, libre ¿qué voy a hacer? Bueno, Pato, voy en España, voy a trabajar para un mes y medio, dos meses en un pequeño restaurante, así que me voy a aprender el básico y boom. Estaba con mi abuelo y el básico de español, boom, boom, boom. <risa> boom, boom, boom. <risa> ya lo aprendí el básico la. Pero bueno, cuando encontré a la chica venezolana, ella me dice, tu español es de mierda. <risa> Entonces, no voy a hablar español contigo. <risa> y yo dije, ah, bueno. Así estamos, <risa> pero poco a poco um, ella comencé a hablar español conmigo y bueno, ahora soy más fluente porque para, para ella principalmente, pero bueno, ahora practico con toda la gente que encuentro que habla ese español. Bueno, y no solamente español aprende de Dublino, pero también portugués, eh, porque en Dublín es muy brasileño, en Tau... Bom, eu gosto muito brasileiro do Brasil, a pessoa que fala português do Brasil, uh, que é um pouco diferente, eu sei que é diferente do português do Portugal, e também eu gosto muito, em geral, Sul América. É, se um dia vou para visitar um, um continente para muito tempo, seguro que vai ser o Sul América, porque... Tem, tem que, eu tenho que visitar. Agora que eu falo, isso dois, dois idiomas, tenho que <risos> partir, ficar lá. Bom, <risos> e português está um pouco diferente. Comecei com Duolingo e depois falei com um pouco de gente, um pouco de gente, então eu pratiquei muito. Uh, em Dublin tem muito brasileiro, venezuelano em geral. Então, o espanhol e o português podia praticar muito. A uh, verdade é que o português é o idioma que eu falo, não falo muito bem. Tenho que praticar, praticar mais. E, e não gosto que a, e, a, agora fico em Itália e não tem muito... Suda, bom, não sei, só perto, perto de Roma. Né, provavelmente em Roma tem lá comuni, uma, uma comunidade mais grande. Mas aqui onde eu estou, eu fico, eu fico, é diferente, não tem muito. Então, não falo mais muito português, não falo muito espanhol, então, não gosto disso. Ok, guys, so I'll wrap it up over here, as I checked, after the 20 minutes that I talked, that I would probably need to make a third video. <laughs> I'm really sorry, like, to <laughs> keep you this long. So... But anyways, uh, I think really you, 
were able to see my um, multicultural experiences in Dublin and definitely that would affect my projects and the person that I am. So I'll wrap it up over here and I'll see you next for the last part of the introduction to Lolo. Fucking hell, it's too fucking long this introduction. <laughs>